When we get questions from QuickBooks users on how to use QuickBooks, very often those questions have to do with payroll. And one of the most common is, yeah, how do I, how do I deduct money from my employee's paycheck? So let's say a wage garnishment order or something like that has been received, and the QuickBooks user wants to know, well, how do I set that up in QuickBooks so that that money will come off of the paycheck? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come over here to the list drop-down menu, and I'm going to select the payroll item list. From here, I'm going to click on this uh, button, and from the menu that pops up, I'm going to select new. I'm going to create a new payroll item for this wage garnishment order. I'm going to use the custom setup. It gives me more flexibility than the easy setup does. And I have to select one of these types of payroll items this should be. Well, deduction is already selected, and that's what it is, right? We're deducting money from the employee's paycheck, so I'm good with that. I'll just click Next. QuickBooks wants a name for this payroll item. And I misspelled the employee's name already. Will height, wage, garnishment. I put the employee's name in there because I usually set up a, an individual separate payroll item for every wage garnishment order. It's a little bit easier as far as setting up how much should be deducted and that sort of thing. All right, now this is optional, but it will save lots of time in the future if you take the time to fill this out now. And that is the vendor, who's gonna get, who are these funds gonna go to once they're deducted from the paycheck? I've already set up Franchise Tax Board as a vendor in this QuickBooks file. We're gonna say that uh, perhaps he has some back taxes due to the state of California, something like that. And so that's why we're using Franchise Tax Board. There's usually a number, and I'll just put something in there uh, along with the case. Nice to do that if you pay this as a payroll liability check after the funds are withheld, then that number will print on the memo line of the check, which is, which is kind of nice. Payroll liabilities. So, so this, this is where are these dollars going to go? Where's QuickBooks going to post these when it withholds them from the paycheck? And by default, anything that QuickBooks withholds from the paycheck, it wants to put in payroll liabilities. And so many transactions get dumped into that account that I really try not to use it for anything else other than the taxes that, that normally deduct from a paycheck. So I have created an other current liability type of account called Wage Garnishments Payable. Fits my needs exactly. That's what I'm going to use. Tax, tra tra tax tracking type. This is probably the most important screen in the whole setup. Potentially, if I chose the wrong thing here, that not only would the paychecks be wrong, but all of the payroll tax returns at the end of each quarter would be wrong. The W-2s could be wrong. So this is kind of an important question. Now, in our case, it's fairly simple. There are uh, no taxes are going to be affected by wage garnishment, right? I mean, he's not going to pay less taxes because he's having money withheld from his check for uh, an old uh, debt, something like that. So, so none in this case is actually the correct option. So I'm going to leave that, click next. And this is only a detailed reflection of the screen before. I have never seen a reason why I needed to change anything on this screen. As long as I pick the right tax tracking type on the previous step, I should be fine here. This is not based on a quantity of anything. So I'm going to skip that comes off of net pay, right? Now, the wage garnishment will be computed on the net amount of the check, not the uh, gross. Now, the default rate and limit. So how much should be withheld from the check? Now, QuickBooks will take either a dollar amount or a percentage here. So let's say that the wage order is for 25% uh, of the employee's net pay. So I can put that in there. QuickBooks will uh, will do the math for that. Is there a limit? Yeah, sometimes there isn't. It may go on uh, indefinitely. You know, the the, uh, um, the child support collections that you sometimes see, those can go on for a long period of time. 
and then there may not be a limit. In this case, let's say he only needs to repay $5,000 and then he's done. So if I put that limit in there, then the next thing I want to do is I want to check to be sure this field is correct. Is it an annual limit, a new 5,000 each year? Well, no, that's not right. It's a one-time limit. So I want to be sure I get that right so that QuickBooks isn't going to reset that and start taking out a new $5,000 at the beginning of each year. All right, so QuickBooks is going to um, withhold 25% of each net paycheck up to until it reaches $5,000 and then it will quit. There we go. Next thing I need to do is I need to uh, put that on the individual employee so that we get the right employee with the, uh, with the deduction there. So I'm going to go to the employee center. I'm going to find my guy here, Michael Wilhite. I am going to edit. I'm going to go to payroll info right here. And things like this add into this section of the file, additions, deductions, and company contributions. So if I start typing, QuickBooks is looking at the payroll item list for something to go in here. So as soon as it recognizes which one I want, there we go. And that's got the information that we just set up in that payroll item. So with that, we're good to go. So let's do a paycheck for Michael and see how that works. I will uh, I'll go here to pay employees. I'll do an unscheduled payroll because we're just going to do one check here for Michael. And let's create him a check for 80 hours. He's worked two weeks and he's getting his first paycheck. Now, um, I normally I would select uh, continue here if I was just doing a payroll, but I want to look at the detail and I want you to see the detail of how this is affecting his paycheck. So I'm going to click on his name, which brings up the detail window it's up on the other screen here. Let me pull that in. All right, so here we go. Uh, he's making $20 an hour, 80 hours at $1,600. And there is the wage garnishment right there. $335.79. So that's all working perfectly. Once I create the paycheck, and I'll just close that. I'm not going to print the paycheck. Now that amount has been withheld. So that's the process start to finish as far as creating the payroll item, uh, attaching that to an employee, and making sure that it comes off the paycheck. I'm going to do another video here in just a bit that's going to show you how you might set that up to be an automatic liability that you can pay. So it's on your list, uh, just like payroll tax liabilities that you have to pay from time to time. Thanks for watching.